When we first learned about Pip Hare, we were so impressed with her story, her drive, and her that we reached out. We very quickly decided that her quest to compete in the Vendée Globe race was an endeavor Smartsheet wanted to be part of. Since we agreed to sponsor Pip, we've had the chance to get to know one another. She's also gotten to know our whole company, speaking at our recent All Hands meeting, where she made a huge impression on our team. So we asked her to join us at Engage. The word inspiration gets thrown around a lot these days, but Pip is the real deal. She's joining us from her boat somewhere off the coast in the UK. Hi, Pip. How are you? Hi, Mark. I'm really good. Thank you for inviting me to uh, join Engage. Yeah. Hey, we saw a little bit about the uh, Vendée Globe Challenge in the video, but tell us more about the race and why you cho chose to take on this challenge. I have been obsessed with the Vendée Globe race since I read about it in my team because I think quite simply it's one of the toughest sporting events that exists on the planet. It's three months of solid performance and at every level it's mental performance it's physical performance it's emotional resilience and to stay on the single handed non-stop around the globe was something i've always wanted to do um and i'm really really happy to be making it happen this year and when we spoke a few weeks ago you were showing me some things that you do on the boat to stay safe and one of those really struck me let's let's take a look at that snippet in that conversation and we'll talk more after that clip yeah, so I wear, I wear a life jacket and I have a tether and, and the tether is attaching me to the boat uh, and I use a short and a long tethering system and most of the time I will choose to be on a short tether because if you get washed by the waves on a short tether, uh, well if you're on a long tether potentially you could still sort of end up outside the boat, attached to it but outside it. Um, there are some times when I just physically can't clip on because I have to move about the boat so quickly it's not practical but in my experience the times really when you are at most risk are the times when you think you are most safe so if I'm not clipped on and I'm doing a job uh, I'm very aware of that risk and I you know I mitigate through my actions um, but the times when I'm really fastidious about clipping on are when for example I'm dozing in the cockpit uh, and you think, well, this is fine. It's a nice, safe, secure environment. What struck me about that was the idea that it's when you feel the most safe, you feel the need to be the most careful. Yeah, it, it's true. It, it, it's kind of, I guess one of the ways I, I explain it is that when you spend so much time on the boat and the environment is changing all the time, your definition of normal changes. And so the first time I get into a massive Southern Ocean storm, I will be scared and I will be super, super careful. But after I'm in my fifth one and I've been in there for a month, it feels normal. And that's really when I have to look after myself. It's complacency, I guess. And, and in our business, Pip, you know, redundancy is a very important feature. And I recall you telling me about some of the choices and trade-offs you've had to make between redundancy and inefficiency. Have you taken the things that I need? not what I want. Uh, we're just thinking all the time about minimizing the weight and the volume of things that I can take. So before I go, um, we're going to really carefully go through the spares. And we do things like making sure that um, I only need three spanners for every bolt on the boat. So we make all the bolts either an eight or 10 or a 13. Um, and then all the, all, the, all the tops of screw heads are... Um, posi drive so I only need one screwdriver and it's all that sort of attention to detail yeah. that helps me perform keeps the weight down and and while this is a solo race you aren't completely alone out there I know there's a team of people helping you and I know they're using Smartsheet to do so your team has also developed a dashboard that we can follow your progress we spoke to them about this and here's what they told us there are three components of the dashboard which are internally facing which are really about helping the team uh, and helping Pip perform as, as best as possible. There is also another part of the dashboard which is externally facing. And actually what that does is really powerful as well. You know, what Smartsheet have built for us is actually another sheet which is pulling on data uh, around the boat whilst it's sailing, 
um, performance data around the boat, and also biometric data being pulled from PIP about how she is physically performing and pulling all of that data from the boat into a sheet. And that is then driving a dashboard which we are going to share publicly and give people insight into this whole new layer um, of PIP's journey throughout the race. We'll be sending a link of that dashboard out so all of you can follow along, uh, watch your inboxes. As we've been saying, it's really all about being proactive in creating change rather than waiting for change to happen to you. What was your light switch moment that made you decide to enter the world of solo racing in the first place? I think it, it had been my dream since I was in my teens, but I couldn't, I, there was no traditional pathway to enter the sport. I just, I couldn't find one. I kept watching and waiting for someone to show me the way and it didn't happen. And actually quite late in my mid thirties, I suddenly realized that, that the power was inside me. I could actually make this happen. And and if I didn't make it happen, then I only had myself to blame. And I, I guess I just kind of needed to give myself permission to have a go and also to make the mistake and not feel bad if it didn't work out. The last time we talked, I introduced you to Kermit, the 16 foot skiff I'm having refurbished. You were very gracious, even though it's not quite the technological nautical marvel you'll be sailing on. But you talked about the idea of potential seeing a boat and imagining where it might take you. Can you share some of what you told me with our audience? Well, actually, Mark, that reminds me of something you said when we spoke about creating memories. So I wonder if I can turn the tables on you and ask to play a clip from that conversation. Sure. Probably in the rest of my lifetime, Pip, I will probably have, and hopefully when you come over to visit, it'll be one of those times. I'll probably have 25 to 50 moments, which are highly memorable. Yeah. And it's, you know, not to sound too dramatic or, um, you know, or too deep about it, but those are the things you remember. Yeah. So when you think about where you want to put your energies, if you value those things, then it becomes a very simple decision. And, and kind of like when we started Smartsheet, I can tell you the number of people who were critical of us starting and embarking on that journey, um, I, I, it was pretty similar to this, where a lot of the people were like, are you really going to renovate Kermit? What a waste of money. I'm supposed to be the one conducting the interview, Pip, <laughs> but you're right. I'm sure you've had plenty of naysayers or people who've told you you can't or you shouldn't do something. How do you deal with that? I think I've always dealt with that by just going and proving them wrong. It's very easy for somebody in the background to say that it can't be done because you you don't look right, you're not the right gender, you're not the right age. But that's always made me fairly determined to prove to myself and to them that I can do it. Uh, and and I believe really strongly in, in actions over words and, and that's how I prove them wrong. Well, one of the other comments you made that, that really struck me was when I asked you about what the ro boat represents for you. Uh, let's look back at what you said, and then I'd love to, for you to elaborate on that a bit. This is the vessel that is enabling me to be the person that I want to be, but it's also keeping me strong. It's allowing me to perform. It's my pod of safety. Um, and, it, and, you know, it, it does have a personality. It does, yeah, sure, it's an inanimate object, but... When there's only me, then there's only my emotions and my emotions are naturally going to be reflected in everything that's around me. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I've had the boat for a year and a half and I, I love it. I absolutely love it, but I, I know it. I know what it sounds like. I know when that sound is bad. I know when something is wrong. I can feel if something is not right. So you do kind of become one. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it means all of that. And, and, and sitting in the boat now, talking to you now is, is really special because I can, you know, share some of, some of it. But I guess the main thing for me is the boat is the platform for me to be the person that I want to be. It, it, it allows me to perform in a way that I don't get to anywhere else. Uh, there are no excuses, but also I stretch myself further. So it enables me to be the best, best version of me. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Pip, the Vendate Lobe begins just a little bit over a month from now, I think November 8th. What are you doing between now and then to make those final preparations to get everything just dialed in? So I've got two weeks left of training, which is why I'm out on the water now, because we're trying to make the most of, of every sailing second that we can. Uh, next week, I'm going out for what we're calling the dress rehearsal. So I'm testing all my systems and my backup systems. Then there's all of the, the packing, the checklists, all of that sort of thing. Our smart sheet is coming in really handy for that level of planning. And then a couple of weeks before the race, everything just calms down a bit. I, I take some time to look at the course, to look at the weather, to prepare my myself and then off we go yeah well best of luck it's been so great talking with you and having you part of the smart sheet family and i want to close with one more clip of our from our most recent conversation because i think it perfectly captures why we wanted to partner with you i think that's why i you know one of the main reasons i love solo sailing is because i you know i own my success and my failure equally you know i i have to take responsibility for every action uh, and I like that. I like the fact that there's nowhere to hide, but I also like the fact that, you know, you, you, you make a mistake, you level up, and then you find a way around it, because you have to. It, 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 it's a good way to be. So I think that pretty much says it all. Pip, thanks for joining us and for inspiring us. We're gonna be watching you and cheering you on. And thank you. Bye, everyone.